Hello and welcome to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'll show you how you can build your very own SMPS circuit like this one. So this board has an output voltage of 5 volts or 3.3 volts which can be configured using this jumper and the maximum output current of this board is up to 1.5 amps. Along this video, I'll explain the complete circuit of our SMPS and will also provide you the design files so that you can use this design in your very own projects. So let's get started. The complete circuit diagram for our SMPS board is given over here. I'll explain how the circuit diagram works and I'll also tell how each of these components is placed on our PCB over here. But before we get there, I would like to mention PCBGOGO who are not only the fabricator of our SMPS board but are also the sponsor for this video. PCBGOGO offers professional high quality PCB prototype, PCB assembly and PCB layout services. They are highly specialized in quick turn prototypes for low and medium volumes. I have been using their service for quite some time and their quality and delivery is good. So do consider giving them a try. Coming back to the circuit, starting from the input side, we have our fuse over here, which is a slow blow fuse rated for 230 volts and 1 amps. So on our hardware over here, you can see our fuse over here. And then from the fuse, we have a bridge rectifier, which is DB107, as you can see here. We have a fuse and then we have a bridge rectifier. So what happens here is that the fuse is used for input protection and the bridge rectifier converts the AC mains to DC. And then this DC voltage like all rectifiers will be filtered using our filter capacitor over here which is rated for 10 microfarads and 400 volts. So this will remove any ripples that was present in our DC voltage. Now taking a closer look you can see that this DC voltage goes in through a transformer and then comes back to our switching regulator IC and then go and then completes the circuit. So if you take a look at the path, you can see that it goes to the transformer and then it comes to our switching regulator IC and inside our switching regulator IC there will be a transistor which we will switch. So assume this is the transistor and all these pins are connected to the uh, single point of the transistor so it will be completing our circuit through this controller IC. So this controller IC is from a company called power integration and the part number is TNY284DG. So this is like the brain of our SMPS controller which will decide on how fast the transformers which we switched. So this will be the primary side of the transformer and this will be the secondary side for our switching transformer. And then there are a few other components which is the resistor R1 and R2 each are of 2 mega ohms and these two resistors together will form the sense resistor network which will be used to power our controller as well as to sense the voltage, uh, sense the current voltage on the primary side. Then over here we have two diodes which is a Zener diode with part number P6KE and another normal diode which is a, a ultra force diode and both of these diodes together will work like a clamping circuit. So this clamping circuit will clamp all the excessive voltage which appears during the switching process and that could potentially damage our controller IC over here. Now taking a look at the board, you can see uh, even this board will give you a clear uh, representation. So we are coming in through a fuse and then goes to a voltage divider network and then we have a filter capacitor over here. This is the filter capacitor and then through the transformer we are getting into our uh, uh, SMPS controller IC and then we are completing the circuit. So this is our SMPS controller IC the TNY284 which I told you earlier and these two are the diodes which will be used as a clamping circuit and the sense resistors are here R1 and R2 sense resistors are in SMT package. Now there are two more components which I have not explained one is a DC filter capacitor which is used to provide a smooth DC voltage for operating our SMPS controller IC and another capacitor over here is a Y class capacitor which you can find here. So this is a Y class capacitor which will be used to filter all the EMI noise during the, the transformer when the transformer is getting switched. The most important component on an SMPS circuit is the SMPS switching transformer itself. 
The data sheet for this SMPS transformer can be found at the link given in the description of this video. Over here we have not mentioned any details about the transformer like the number of windings, the number of turns or uh, uh, the primary voltage or the secondary uh, voltage. So you would have to look into the transformer data sheet which will have the electrical diagram like this. As you can see our transformer has one primary winding and two secondary windings and uh, there will be about 141 turns on the primary side and about six turns on the secondary side and the output voltage on the secondary will be five volts you can also see the dot convention rules over here there is a dot here which means that current will leave through this coil and there's a dot here which represents that current will exit through this coil so coming back to our diagram, let me import all the features that I showed you in the data sheet. Now moving on to the secondary side, we have our rectified voltage over here. Sorry, not the rectified voltage, the switched voltage over here from our secondary side of the transformer. That will be rectified using a Scotchy diode SR360. So as always, as soon as we rectify something, we will put a filter capacitor. Here the filter capacitor is 1000 microfarad and 16 volts. If you see the board, you can also see there is the uh, secondary side of the transformer over here and the output from the secondary side of the transformer passes through this scotchy diode over here and the filter capacitor is this one over here which is 1000 microfarad and 16 volts so then you can also see another circuit over here with a resistor and a capacitor this together forms the snubber circuit so the snubber circuit will suppress any high voltage that is caused by switching on the secondary side so if you want to check the snubber circuit on our board you can see that it's placed on the back side of our board with our resistor and our capacitor over here so these two things together forms this number circuit and then after we have done the rectification we have another lc filter which is an inductor and a capacitor so on our board you can also find our lc filter so this is a drum inductor and this is a low ESR capacitor. Both of these together will form an LC filter. Now we have discussed the primary side, we have discussed the secondary side. What's remaining is our feedback side. So this feedback side will actually tell uh, this controller IC when to turn on and when to turn off to maintain the required voltage on the secondary side. So let's look into the feedback side. It mainly consists of two components. One is the reference voltage regulator and the other is the optocoupler. Now the main purpose of this feedback section is to sense the output voltage over here and tell our controller whether to turn on or turn off. So for example, if we are trying to maintain 5 volts over here, if the voltage is more than 5 volts, then we will ask our controller to turn off the primary side and thus the voltage on the secondary side will go down. If the voltage is less than 5 volts, then we will ask our primary side to turn on uh, using this controller and then the voltage on the secondary side will increase. So that way by switching this primary on and off, we have to maintain the secondary at 5 volts. To do that, we have to check if there is actually 5 volt on the secondary side and that's where these two things come in. One is the TL431 which is a reference voltage generator. It will generate 2.5 volts and another is an optocoupler which will act as an isolation between the primary side and the secondary side. So based on the information we give to, so an optocoupler normally has an LED and a transistor inside, a phototransistor. So by telling this LED, by, by giving signal to this LED, the transistor will close the path. And as you can see here, this pin is connected over here telling this controller IC when to turn on and when to turn off. Now um, let's see how to set whether uh, the output voltage should be 5 volts or 3.3 volts. To do that we have a voltage divider network over here. As I told you earlier this TL4321 will always provide 2.5 volts at this point. Now using this two transistor network which is called a voltage divider network we can either shift the jumper pin between these two connections or these two connections. So over here you can see our optocoupler IC which is the PC817 the one over here and the voltage reference uh, TL431 which is in a transistor package and over here you can see two jumper wires which actually switches between uh, connecting a 2k resistor to our TL431 
one or a 680 ohm resistor to our TL431. So if the output voltage has to be set at 5 volts we have to place our jumper at this position and if the output voltage has to be set in 3.3 volts we will be moving our jumper to this position. So basically it changes the resistor connected to this and just the reference voltage will also change. Um, with the help of this reference voltage IC we will be giving signal to the diode over here which is a photodiode and it will turn on and will send the signal to a controller IC asking us to turn on the primary uh, primary side of the transformer. Similarly if the voltage exceeds this uh, optocoupler will uh, turn off the LED inside it and thus the primary voltage will also go down. So that is it this is how the entire circuit works. I think I have covered all the components on the board. There are a few more SMD components like these uh, R5, R4 and R5, uh, R6 and you can find those components over here. You can see R5 over here, R7 over here and a few more SMD components on the back side of the board. So the design file for the PCB board along with the Gerber is also provided. So now uh, once you have done with the circuit diagram what you can do is you can test it on a perf board and then proceed with fabrication. For fabrication we have used PCB GoGo as I mentioned earlier and I'll show you how you can order these PCBs from PCB GoGo. To order your PCBs from PCB GoGo get into pcbgogo.com and their website will open up something like this. On the top right corner make sure you have already signed in and then you can enter the dimensions of your PCB. For example mine is 50 cross 50 and the number of quantity would be 5. I will be using a two layer PCB and the thickness would be 1.6 mm so I will just click on quote now and on the next page you will be taken to uh, provide more options by default you can leave all these values as they are for example we'll use a normal fr4 board which is a single type single piece board and the important thing over here is on the right side you can select the country you are in and the type of shipping you would like to use and in the bottom you will see the total cost for your pcb so my pcb is costing only around five dollars and i can use any cheap shipping options to reduce the total cost of my PCB. On the left side you have some interesting options like the number of layers, the thickness of your PCB, the solder mask color, the silk screens color and much more. You can play around with this if you are interested. Once you are done with that just click on add to basket and you will be taken to another page where you have to upload the Gerber file. Now the Gerber file for this PCB can be found in the link given in the description of the video. I already have the Gerber file with me, I just have to add it and once it's uploaded it will take some time for them to check if the Gerber file is good and once that is done you can just submit your PCB file and within few days your PCB would arrive at your doorstep. After few days I received my package as you can see here. So I proceeded with opening it and as you can see the package was neatly done and the PCBs were neatly wrapped inside a bubble sheet and the PCB quality was also good. Once I received the PCB I assembled all the components and created this test setup where the output of our SMPS is connected to an electronic adjustable DC load setup. Currently the output is 5 volt with the maximum current of 850 milliamps because of our transformer is a handmade transformer. On the input side I have connected our SMPS to a variac to adjust the input AC voltage. Currently it is at 230 volts. I can also change the jumper pin on the SMPS to change it from uh, 5 volts to 3.3 volt. I just have to simply move the jumper from the right position to the left position. Make sure you have turned off the power supply while doing this. Now uh, let me go ahead and increase the AC mains to 230 volts again. So Let's set it to 230 volts. It can also work with 110 so it wouldn't be a problem. After setting the AC mains you can see the output voltage is now 3.2 which is close to 3.3. If I increase the current from 850 milliamps you can see the output current completely collapses. This is because of the over current limit protection inside our SMPS controller IC. So what you can do is you can create a different type of transformer. For, for this transformer the maximum is around 850 milliamps. As you can see with 850 milliamps everything is working properly. 
If you're using a different transformer or the exact same transformer whose data sheet is provided at the link in the description of the video, then you will be able to achieve 1.5 amps easily. Uh, this controller can handle power up to 8.5 watts. So based on the transformer design, you can further increase the current rating if required by your project. So that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful from it. I'll meet you in another video with another interesting project. Thank you. Bye bye.